Well, hey, good morning. This is Jim Moore, and you are watching Words of Encouragement. Uh, yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. You're watching. That's I might just doing. break out in the spirit of speaking in tongues. You're watching Words <laughs> of Encouragement. This is program number 509. It is the last day of this event. I've got to be careful how I say that. The last day of David's tent. Not the last day of David's tent because right. David's right. tent's been going on for thousands of years. Yeah. yeah. But it is the last day day of this event and we are sitting here with Jeremy and Holly Graman, two of my best friends in all the world. <laughs> and my gosh, I I I'm not rubbing it in, but I am. Because <laughs> if you haven't been here, I don't even know what to say. I just we were just talking about the fact that we hit a level of presence that I don't think I've ever experienced it. Now I've experienced some wild things, but we have a tendency to think it's like every time you come in, it's kind of the same. And this was, it was so, so intense yeah, was, that, yeah. And then you guys had some stuff. I, anyway, so I'm going to stop talking. I'm going to let them uh, introduce themselves. I'm going to ask you some questions that I don't know the answers to, but that way people can uh, know who you are. So tell us just a little bit about yourself. Yeah, so I'm Jeremy. This is my beautiful wife, Holly. We've been married for uh, 23 years this year. Yep. And I have three beautiful kids, Hannah, Kyler, and Caitlin. Caitlin just graduated uh, high school this year, so we're, we're transitioning into a new season yeah. for us with what? our kids. Uh, Big one. It's been awesome. Uh, we we've loved every stage of that aspect of our life, and, and doing ministry and discipleship with our kids has been been incredible. But and they uh, are incredible. Kids. Yeah, yeah. And really, our our hearts, we really came alive because of the Father bringing us into a lifestyle of worship. So let's talk about that real quick because there's so many things that we could talk about that you do. You guys do discipleship and it's all connected, right? Yeah, it's it's all, yeah. connected. It all flows it all goes together. place yeah. of intimacy. And yeah. we yes. we still have to get this more and more that all life flows from intimacy. So yes. 13 years ago, tell them. Yeah, it was yeah. actually not quite 13. We're getting ready to start our th 13th year. Okay. But, um, but yeah, so 12 years ago, um, we were in kind of just a really uh, different space. We had um, pulled away from kind of some of the normal church. <laughs> uh, just because, what is normal? Anyway? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, we were just hungry for more. Yeah, and we were really dissatisfied with what was happening on just a Sunday morning. Sure. And so we started, Holly and I started kind of fellowshipping in homes. Uh, and we did a fellowship in our own home. And we really were just, we began to get hungry for worship. Just, it was like something that the Lord just planted in our hearts. And, and so in this couple year period of time that started in about 2008, um, we started traveling down, because we're from Roseburg, so we started traveling down to a little town uh, called Jacksonville, just outside of Medford. And there's a church there called Applegate Christian Fellowship. And, um, and we had just heard some really cool things about what God was doing there and um, and so we went down there and they were doing some radical worship services on Saturday nights and so we thought man this is our people so <laughs> then we found out that they're not just doing those extra services on the weekend they actually had already established morning and evening worship wow. and the way that they did that is they actually hired an actual professional band that had a recording contract and the band walked away from their recording contract to become full time worshippers what crazy people do such a thing <laughs> right so they were a they were a band a young band kind of a, a rock worship band um, called seven places that they uh in out of medford there and they literally just began writing their own music and and so it was facilitating this this house of worship and, and they, were, they were the ones doing the morning they and were evening. doing yes. morning and evening and and there was other people and so obviously there was prayer involved and so and holly and i heard this and we just it was like something was like wow like this is could this be could this be something that we do so but we didn't at the time we didn't have a building we weren't really going to church anywhere we were if it, if we were doing worship it was more just us in our living room just worshiping god and it wasn't uh 
we had a, a, in the process, God called us back into the church to help plant a church. So we helped plant a church in Winston, Oregon. And um, through that, we became kind of more involved with the corporate body. And um, it was in that season uh, that the Lord, I, I actually woke up quoting the book of Romans, oh my God. chapter 12. And I'd never woken up quoting scripture, like out loud, like I sat out of bed and I'm like, I hear you brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. Well, I'm sure you just yeah. had too much pizza. Or something, <laughs> you know. yeah. And so, and it was probably, I don't know, four in the morning. And I was just like, what, just what happened. is this? Uh, what is this? And the Lord began, and so I just sat and the Lord you know, we were we were used to the Lord waking us up in the morning, and and really we had been really uh, attentive to the presence and the voice of the Lord, and so we had, we had been really going after, and we're hungry for the presence, hungry for intimacy with God, hungry for the Holy Spirit, and we were literally just willing to do whatever it took to cap for. And you know, you said earlier about uh, really just kind of falling in love with worship. People understand. It's not a system we're following. No. Right. It's not like, oh, I fall in love with the Bible now because I've learned how to be disciplined. No, yeah, it's no. about the fact that he comes. Yeah, and it's that's what you fall in love with. Right. Because that's what you're created for. Yeah. To, to be with him. Yeah. Yes. And whether yes. it's through worship yeah. or yeah. whatever it is, it's, all it's all always it. about connectedness to yes. him and frankly a lot of people won't agree with this but you can feel that yep. not every time not all, not always the same level but that does create yes, it hunger does. Yes, in it your does. Heart. yeah and really um that's that's the whole thing and, and you know the point of spiritual disciplines isn't for us to check a bunch of boxes to, to, be disciplined. to yeah the the point is is that we we actually don't even call them spiritual disciplines anymore we call them encounter opportunities. Yeah. So we teach our people when we're discipling people. It's like the point of you reading your Bible is there's an opportunity for encounter. The, the point of yeah. having a prayer life is really to join the conversation of the Trinity. The point of, of anything that we would do, whether it's fasting or meditating or worshiping, whether that's in song, you know, even now, like we really are teaching people and helping people understand that worship is not music per se. Worship is a mindset. It's a lifestyle. And, and it's really a table set for two. Yeah. That's what worship that's awesome. is. It's that's a table a set for two it. where God comes in. That's actually out of a book by uh, Graham Cook uh, called Permission Granted, I think is what. If you haven't read Permission, Permission Granted, Granted, if you want to know where <laughs> God must. is taking the church, you, must. you yeah. need to read, read that book because I'm telling you... Um, it, it, everything and it's not just Graham Cook. I mean, this is coming from all all corners of the globe. Honestly, well, it's, it's where we're going as the body of Christ. Yes, we're going to meet the King. Yeah, where are we're going to physically yeah. in our bodies resurrected yeah. meet the King. Yeah, and it's He's not content right. for us to talk about Him. Right, and just to know about Him and right. all the facts and all yeah. the He walked here and He did. But you first have to have a mindset. You have to really believe that because you won't go after what you don't believe. And this is why I think those encounters are so valuable because it lifts the watermark. It shows, oh, yeah. oh, oh, I can have this. Yeah. It's not just this one time. No. Nope. You know, no. so Holly, how were you in this? Were you like just doing it because he was doing it or what was going on in your heart? Um. Worship actually always burned in me. I started playing piano when I was four for the purpose of worship. Oh my goodness. Because I wanted to have an, an expression, a way to actually release what I was. I'm, I'm like a jukebox in my head. Yeah, and so I'm always hearing not just songs, but I'm always hearing music. And I wanted a way to be able to actually um, release and, and actually produce what I was hearing inside of me. Wow. And so it's always been something that's burned inside of me. And when... Um, Jeremy woke up quoting Romans 12, 1 and 2, and the Lord gave us an invitation. Some may call it a mandate, but it's always yeah. an invitation. 
it's both. It really. felt yeah, it's like so, a mandate. Yeah. It's like, um, yeah, right. like uh, Lord, you know, who will go for us? Yeah, right. You know, exactly. You're the right. only one in the room. Right, yeah. exactly. Yeah. They're like, choose me. Okay. So um, that, that, that was that invitation to come into, with intentionality, the presence every day. Come face every to face day. with me every, every day. day. So that was so the we, invitation. And so that was the invitation. So we actually had um, a, a, a appliance repair store that we were using to rehabilitate men. Was that the furniture store? That, no, no, that, that was, was, that that was after. after. So okay. this was, we actually had a vocation rehab store where we were helping men learn how to work on appliances. Okay, okay. Yeah. I didn't see and, that one. And so that's where we actually launched daily worship. Okay. And we, the Lord said, just come every day here and just meet with me. Yeah. And so, um, and we did. And at the time, our three kids were really little. And that was a, a, a joy of choosing to homeschool because our kids just went with us. Right and so um, I didn't, I, it was amazing to partner with my husband because we are one, yeah. as the father and I are right designed on. to be yeah. one. And so where his heart lies, mine lies there too. So yes, I went because my husband was there, but more than that, what burned in me was an opportunity to release and, and to connect with the father with that same intentionality. And even more than that, I wanted my kids raised in the presence. Right on. Right and on. I knew that this was what was our family culture. Okay. So this is amazing because I first met you guys through, uh, I think it was through Peter Carlson and maybe, I don't know. Yes. Yeah. And so we wound up, oh, it was... Um, uh, the house burn Roseburg. Yeah, uh, Lindfurter. Lindfurter. Yeah. yeah. So Lindfurter. we're down there doing something, and we go. <laughs> we're, going, we're going to a furniture store, and I'm like, okay, let's go. To, and we go. So this was the second place. Uh -huh. Yeah. So we go in the furniture store, and here, you know, there's all this, all the setups, the displays, just like any store. And in the back, <laughs> this area cordoned off. It was the warehouse, and we took it over. You did, yeah. and it was amazing because I go back there, and I remember your son being on the drums yeah. back there, yeah, and just there. you know, kind of like the Muppets, the animal. <laughs> you know, he was yeah. like just going for it, and I'm like, that's God's gonna use that boy yeah. right there. Yeah, so. he was the ripe age of nine when he picked up his first set of sticks, and literally, it was like an anointing from the Lord came on him, and has never lifted. It's only increased. Yeah. That's he's now amazing. he's now almost 21. 21 uh, but ago. within a week, he was playing in worship with us, and he never stopped. So you guys do this still today? Yes. Every single morning. Yes. Yeah. Seven days a week. Actually, six days. Six days. Six days. Yeah. Take a break. We take a <laughs> Sabbath. Yeah. yeah. But we still but we still encourage the worship culture. Sure. Sure. Yeah. So sure. it's like just because we don't come to the building on Saturday for that particular reason every week. There are lots of times we have special events on Saturdays sure. and, we, and we're always doing things. So, yeah. so what do you think? I'm going to ask you a, a kind of a loaded question. What do you feel like the greatest benefit of you saying yes to this daily hour, two hours? How long it, you go? It, as long as the Holy Spirit oh, sometimes. So you, you don't have a it, clock? <laughs> an hour-ish. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It, it so extends. what would you say is the, the greatest benefit of the 12 going on 13 years that you have every morning been presenting yourself before him and adoring him. What is that? Um, the presence has become the norm. So it has trained my heart and my mind and my soul to position myself to receive so much so, and you talked a minute ago that, okay, we do this and, and, and a lot, we don't always feel it. We don't always, I will tell you that there were years that, that if that wasn't the case, that yeah. you're just singing, you're kind of pushing through the veil doing, and you're doing just doing you've been asked to do. And I would say that for the last probably four to five years, that has not been the case. Why do you think God does that? I don't think it's, no, I think, I don't think it's God. I think it's us. Okay. I, I think that God is always wanting to take us right. to the deepest place that we can possibly imagine or, or to the deepest place that without, without overwhelming us to the point where we can't breathe. Where you anymore. die, like yeah. yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. If you weren't here. Seriously. I don't, I honestly, I've been doing this 40 years. Yeah. I don't think I've ever felt what I felt yesterday. I've, it was I've, different. It, it was there's like, only been a couple times where, where I have literally like, 
like almost fallen out just yeah. in worship. Yeah, 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 yeah. And that's what that's what we were we were on the cusp. You know, we of don't that. we don't like to use the phrase out of body because people freak out and, and it's new agey and blah blah blah. Whatever. It's spirit though. But all I know is that I felt like I was in another, yeah. another place. Yeah, we yes. we went up. We were worshiping, and this is the whole point. The point of worship is to get us to to get out of this realm. And up into the heavenly places. Yeah. That's but don't the you point. become so heavenly minded you're no earthly good? <laughs> yeah, actually, I think that that's probably the one of the worst phrases that the church that's ever, ever, been ever been created. Ever been created. Uh -huh. yeah. I, I think that I think that that has actually kept us and has and has kept us in a place where we don't encounter where that's that's not. I have to somehow take God and and minimize him into what would. What would fit into the world, and it was never Let's designed to be that way. Let's keep him in church. Let's keep him in church. Yeah, yeah. don't bring him, him into politics yeah. or business <laughs> or anything. Yeah, I actually, you know, know that that phrase came from people who really had lost touch with reality, and you can do that. I mean, there's there's a thing, you know, such thing as fanaticism and all that. I watched the show last night about. Um, this guy, I forget his name, someone, Jeff, or something, you know, he's, in, he's basically in a cult. So that can happen, but the people that I've known that were heavenly minded were the most earthly good I've ever known. Yes. Right, right. Because yes. the Father is for the earth, for God yeah. to love the world, the right. cosmos. Yeah. I think mean, he's not heaven just. Heaven needs to come to earth. Holy yes. cow, <laughs> yes. In fact, that's what, as it is in heaven. Yeah, how yeah. do we not. Understand that Jesus, even in his, even teaching his disciples how to pray, that it was all about there needs to be here. Yeah, absolutely. And, and so Isn't for me, that's the place we all want to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we don't really want it now. Well, we're supposed to want it. Now. We're supposed to want and, it. Now. And when you taste it now, it's the most it's yeah. the most glorious, infectious. Yeah. And so literally, that's what happened. Often, I, I want Holly to share yeah. her reason. But for me, the most the greatest benefit is. I hear the Father's voice unceasingly. I experience every time. I don't care if it's the first chord or the first note. It's I'm there. It's I. It, there's I'm literally not even. I'm a thought away from being fully in the presence. Yeah, so that when whenever the enemy's temptation or anything comes or or disappointment or something breaks or whatever something stuff happens, mm -hmm. I'm not. I'm not. Lost. I'm not drawn into that. Right. I'm not. I'm literally one breath from there to here. It's Yahweh, and I just literally. I just read that. Did you Isn't really? That, that was amazing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Go ahead, Holly. Yeah. Oh, so for me, it really put into perspective good, better, best. And so, we've done ministry our entire time that we've been married, and even in courtship, we were in ministry, and that's good. And, and sometimes that's even better. But there's a space that if I'm doing ministry and I I am I am not the presence is not my first and foremost. If the face to face with the Father is not my first and foremost, yeah, then I'm missing it. the best. Yeah. I'm missing the best. Yeah. And so what it's it not really that he's like mad or anything no, like that. I mean, no, you know, worship like, worship isn't for him. He's not an egotistical God that needs right. our worship. It's for us. It's for us to come back to alignment with yes. who we truly were designed said, to be. Yes. Let's say that again. Yeah. We, worship. We, yes. Because we are ministering to Him. Yes. There, that's a lost art. What does it even mean? I talk to people all the time. What does it mean to minister to the Lord? That phrase is used over and over in the Bible. I don't know. So. It is ministry to the Lord, but he doesn't really need it. Right. So say that yeah, again. Yeah, he is That's not like... an egotistical God who is lacking anything. He, so he's doing it for me. So <laughs> worship is what aligns me with who right. I truly be. And so who I truly be is a daughter of the King. And and who I truly be is beloved and I loved. Know. I know, they're just going for it. Ah. <laughs> See, we're sitting there in the glory. I'm getting hit right, right now. now. It's just a hey! <laughs> so what it really did for me was bring me back to that space of I'm first coming back to best. Yeah. Because then everything else is not something I am pouring out or doing in response to try to love the Father. Right, right, right. Instead, everything I'm doing and all the ministry, all the discipleship, everything else we do actually is the overflow from being in the face-to-face -face in the presence yeah. of the yeah. Father. Yeah. And you know, people say this, and we, we have a tendency 
to go to extremes. And when I and I believe in the radical middle, not the compromise, not the wishy-washy middle, but the radical. And so the phrase that you just said, I hear people say this, and we kind of instinctively do this, and I, I try to learn people out of that. But it's not about what you do; it's about who you are. And I'm like, no, 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 it's both. It is about it is about what you be. You said be. I thought you were like making a mistake. No, no, it was no you were intentional. Yeah. It, but it's it's about order. Yes. It's about be first. Yes. It's about who I am. Yes. It's about the yes. first commandment first. Yes. And then and then yes, be a doer, be a great doer. Yes. Do more than you're doing. Actually, but not because you need to do it to feel good about right. yourself or right. think God loves you more. Right. Yeah. If right. you are actually true, truly be. The do will happen. It, 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 oh, you yeah. can't, you yeah. can't be who God created you to be and not do. Yeah, I dare you to walk close to Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> and not do yeah. stuff for Him. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's just like you, that's why it's the overflow is because there has to be an expression of I. I mean, if you're giving yourself to the Lord, He He's yeah. actually giving you back more than you could ever give. Absolutely. Him. And and it's not that love him but that he loved us first so so it's actually us coming to the recognition that wait wait a minute he's doing this in your first yeah, yeah. And, yeah and i'm just responding to that yeah. so yeah. here's what we have is especially in the identity crisis that we've been living in as a nation as people is that we keep trying to do in order to become yeah. where we keep trying to say well i want to be this so i need to do those things to be this but in reality if we would actually come back and just sit this is where abiding comes in. Yep. And if you want to know what the point of daily worship is, if you want to, if you want fruitfulness to mark your life, then the process of abiding, John 15, Jesus is teaching. If you if you'll just abide, which means remain, stay, stay seated, rest, be, okay? In he says two things, in my love and in my words. He says your life will be marked with fruitfulness. So, you know, we used to uh, sing the song and we had the phrase, you can't outgive the Lord. And yeah. it was always about money. Presence <laughs> is the same thing. Yes. When you present yourself to the Lord, you will present himself yes. back. You yes. cannot outgive him. Yes. And yes. it's just, it's amazing what will happen in your life when you get that thing. No right. thing God. You know, yeah. Everything. Yeah. Because that's what we were made right. yes. to be yes. and to do. Yes. David, the reason that the tabernacle of David, and it's not just a tent, no. it's not just, no. it's not about, although no. it's cool, it but, is cool, but it's not about <laughs> that. What it is, is that, you know, if you if you don't know the story of David, he, he was actually rejected by his family because he was not a son of the right mom. Right. right okay. Right. So, so. He was the redheaded stepdad. Yeah. 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 For real. So, yeah. and he was treated like a slave. He wasn't in the house. He was out serving the father's sheep. When they called okay. for the boy. Right. He, he wasn't, wasn't even allowed to right. yeah. So, here's what we see, and we especially see this in Psalm 27. We see David is kind of talking about this process where he has learned that God is his true father. In the field. By sitting alone. In the field. At night. Yes. yes. Probably afraid. Probably, probably afraid. you know, yeah. he's he's facing things. He's all by himself. He knows he's rejected by his family. He knows it. He says it right there in Psalm 27. My this mother. This is so good, and I'll tell you why. <laughs> I just have to interrupt about this. Because there are so many people that think they're disqualified. Oh, yeah. yeah. They walk in a place of thinking, I am the exception to the rule. Yeah, yeah. And David was that guy. Yeah. yeah. But what happened? So, so here he's crying out to God in this psalm. And, and you can just imagine, he's a young man. He's out by himself. He says to, in his, in his psalm, he says, my mother and my father have abandoned me. That's what he says. But you, my God. You have not abandoned me, and you never will. And so he he begins to sing and praise from that place, and and this is where the heart of David is birthed. And I wanna I wanna say that David in this moment got his level of sonship. Like this was when David understood, I'm a son, and and to the point where it created such a level of boldness in him that that when he went back, let, let's you know further on in the story. You know, the Israelites are facing the Philistines, and this one big, ugly, stinky dude is causing the whole community to tremble yeah. and shake. And David shows up on the scene and goes, wait a minute. 
You guys don't know who you are. Yeah, that's right. You don't even understand who, an identity. You crisis. don't even understand who Abba is. Let me let me tell you. He's delivered bears and hands into my line, and you, Stinky Giant, are going down today, right now, bears because I. Into my line. Yeah, into my life. Is that what I'm saying? <laughs> yes. Bears and lions. Carry on. Into my <laughs> head. There you go. <laughs> Anyways, so what we see is this heart of David is birthed out of the secret place, out of, out of, yeah. actually almost out of the despair. I was going to say, so, so did he have to lose everything so that he could gain everything? I, I'm going to ask my own question. I don't think he had to. No. But the point is, it doesn't matter. Right. Even if you've lost everything, <coughs> he is still not only capable, but willing and is trying to bring you into that. Yes. Yeah, we don't have to, but it's the enemy's intention to get us to lose everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So we don't have to, but let me tell you, the, the enemy, he, he hates the fact that we're li living in the very image and likeness of God, that we yeah. have everything. We have the glory of the Lord. We're the, we are partakers of the divine nature. Yeah. And I'm not even talking about Christians. I'm talking about unsafe people oh, yeah. who believe, you know, you're very existence is an affront to the yes. enemy. Right. He yes. every time he looks at a human being, he right. sees he right. sees their image yes. maker. Yeah. Right. And uh, and so he is like he wants to you don't have to be say people say, Well if I become a Christian I'm gonna have to fight the devil. Listen, the devil <laughs> yeah. no. he's not like, oh that worsens mine so I'm gonna he's be nice not, to them. Yeah. No. So anyway yeah. So that's what it does. And so so it's it's at any moment that we come to the revelation we come to the revelation that he is our true father. Yeah. This is why Jesus was teaching his disciples, pray this way, yeah. our father. father. And, uh, and right. he, he was introducing God. Like, he's not far off. He's not a big white bearded dude in the sky. He he is <laughs> the father. He's a father. Yes. And he wants us to relate to him as father. Yes. And yes. and for and for us, you know, some people that's difficult because maybe they that didn't have bad. a father or right. or they or had an abusive, a, abusive yeah. father. Yeah. yeah. So but God or Jesus, the point of Jesus was to reveal the father, mm -hmm. to reveal the kingdom. He, he and his biggest thing was I, I was he was trying to get his disciples and everyone who was following him to to understand if you've seen me You've seen, You've the, seen father. the father. Right, right. I am the very exact nature and image of who my so, dad so is. So how? Let's circle back to worship for a minute. We're yeah. gonna have to wrap it up pretty quick here. How does? We're laughing because these little kids keep looking through the <laughs> window so out there, and, cute, and that's that's prophetic too. I mean, yeah, right. The world is watching, right? Right. How does all of this relate to worship? Because I want people to understand. Because I know there's people saying, well, I can never do that. I can't I can't worship, you know, a couple hours every morning. I don't play the guitar. I can't blah, 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 blah. How does this apply to everyone? Because I believe it applies to every absolutely. human being. Yeah, absolutely. That, that there's not many times that Jesus said the Father seeks something. And the, the one time that stands out, he says, the Father seeks, I'm paraphrasing, people to worship him. The Father seeks such to worship Him, worship Him, and all that. But the point is, worship Him. Yeah. And what? And back to you, Ollie, what you yeah. said. Yeah. This is not. He's not like, oh man, I'm so offended. You right. know, bow to me. <laughs> to right. not. No, it's about what He creates. So all of this that we're saying about identity, how does worship directly impact that? Let well, you start. Yeah. Do, I want to. I want you to talk about how the process of coming back into form. Because we have to we have to understand that what we have believed about sin is actually not true. What we've been taught about sin, uh, even even just the understanding, you know, I was taught by all my growing up that sin is missing the mark. That there's a, a word that we use about missing the mark. But the more that I've studied into and understand the that the the essence of sin or how God views sin is actually not in the behavior. But in the reality of the broken relationship. In the core. Yeah. In the broken relationship. So we can say it this way. What we would call sin, these are behaviors. These are destructive. And, and we're not saying that they're not bad. That's terrible. Yeah, yeah. It's terrible yeah. things. But what it is, is sin is the symptom of a disease called broken relationship with God. And and so this has this has been the Father's heart to draw us clear from the garden. To draw us back to the garden yep. in right relationship. And so Jesus came to restore us to the garden, to that same 
intimate place of walking with the Father in the cool of the day, you know, where we're spending time in the reality of, of present-centered living, where, like where that, we're right. having, we're, well, that's what our, right. our whole that's church, true. the church that we're currently pastoring, that is our mandate. We are, we are raising up a presence-centered culture that disciples people up into their sonship. So what you're saying is, is we're missing the mark, but we're missing what the mark is. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So the mark is not your behavior, although that should be an outflow right. of hitting the mark. And hitting the mark is God Himself, yeah. its relationship with Him, its walking. And we use these words, but so many people not, you were going to have her. Yeah, oh, <laughs> yeah I'm sorry. No, I no, 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 no. I'm the same way. Yeah. Because this is this is what we've been learning about. This is why she was saying, talking about, because we we can come to Jesus and still be living out of alignment. Yes. And so that's it. where I want you to take do it. it. Do it. Go. go. So when you're, go. When, when you're living a present-centered life, you become what you behold. That's I have preached on Thank that. Thank you, Bill so Johnson. Many so times. so yeah. when when you are with intention beholding the Trinity, okay. you become who you were created to be. You okay. are already created in the likeness and image of the Trinity. So this is the way I said that. I said you cannot <laughs> we're, we're being transformed into the image of Christ. Yeah. You yes. cannot become yes. like him when you're constantly beholding right. Himself. Naval gazing doesn't turn <laughs> into the image of Christ. Right. But. And also what you behold, you worship. That's yeah. true. Yeah. What is before your gaze becomes your God. Yeah. And so when we bring ourselves to a space of worship, worship doesn't have to be a song. Worship is a posture of the heart. Worship is a positioning of yourself in the presence. Yeah. That's a space of worship. Right. Now. Music bypasses so many parts of the brain that are logical yeah, and then try to actually hinder you. Like when you, let's say, I sit down to read my Bible and I have these 10 billion thoughts in my head and I can't get them out so I can't focus. Like this is this is like a focal point. This is something that can help as our work maturing in the presence to help us be able to narrow down our focus to be able to stay in what we desire to behold, yeah. which is the truth. Yeah, you know, when I'm in, in the worship set like the other day with you guys, it's this very unique thing where I'm not like just honed in on every word you're saying and I mean I am, I'm hearing it and I'm agreeing with it and I'm singing it part of the time and part of the time I'm not, but really it's like I'm in the presence of the Lord and yes. the music helps. I'm not a musician in the in the classic sense. I play the gym day if that qualifies, I guess it does. Absolutely. But yeah, okay, thank you. But but <laughs> I everybody everyone <laughs> yeah, has right. the, what they used to call the instrument of ten strings, <laughs> you know? But but the point is, yeah, in music so lots of time in my in my you know, because I'm every hour worshiping the Lord too. Yeah. But just yeah. in a different way. Yeah. I'm not playing a guitar or anything like that, but I, I typically turn on music. And then there's times I don't. There's times I love to sit in my car and turn sideways in my seat yeah. and talk to the Lord. Yeah. I know he's in me, yeah. Yeah. but he's also all around yeah. me. So yeah. just leave me alone. Yeah. I, <laughs> so it's it's like you said, it's this mindset yes. that you develop about unbroken. See, God gave me a revelation years ago about Abijah and what that actually meant. Because I was taught, God bless all my teachers, but I was taught that abiding simply meant don't backslide. Just stay safe. Just stay with the Lord. And that's such a I mean, that, I suppose that's true in, in, in the most basic of all basics. Stay safe. Yeah, just don't, just don't do it. Don't go out. Just, oh, just don't backslide. Yeah, and you're, yeah. That's what that means. Yeah. But the truth is, it really talks, it's, it's about an unbroken awareness yes. awareness yes. and the way the Lord showed this to me I was sitting in the chair one day and I felt someone standing right here and I kept doing this because it was like you know like if you ever step up and stand and sit behind your hubby or something they're not necessarily because you can't always I mean when you're talking to me you know you're definitely not talking to God <laughs> but you know so but you have this awareness yes. and that is something you cultivate and the Lord showed that to me. He said, if your wife was standing here right behind you, Jim, right now, you would be aware of her. Yeah. Even though you wouldn't necessarily, because people go, well, you just can't talk to God 24 7. I kind of agree. I kind of disagree. I understand that you can't verbalize, but there is this place of awareness 
And the ancients wrote about this. And they called it different things. I call it an unbroken awareness. That's the way he showed it to me. Read Bill Johnson. Yes. Yeah. I mean, it was just yeah. like, yeah. wow. And so I've been trying to cultivate that yeah. for 20 years. Yeah. And it's not just, wow, now I know that. Now I'm going to say a prayer and I'm going to have it. No. <laughs> it's about this process yes. that you, again, yes. it's not the destination. It's the journey. It's the journey. journey. It's, the journey. It's, it's like a marriage. That's why God talks. He compares. Like a marriage. Yeah, he compares. So, you know, I, I started out, you know, just introducing us that we've been married for 23 years. I've right been together for 25 years. Yep. So, so it's, it, this has been a journey. And, yeah. and our intimacy has gone deeper. There's things that we understand without any communication verbally. There's yeah. things that we just know. Text the same text. text, the text, 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 text. Just, just did that. Yeah, yeah, just did that. So, <laughs> but here's the thing, and I, I want to speak to the. I want to speak to you, to what you said a minute ago about how it's we can't have an unbroken conversation. And I want to. I want to. I wanna, I, I've been living in a different reality yeah. because as I've come alive to to the reality that I am now a spirit being. It says that in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, that if anyone be in Christ, they are a new creation. The old is gone, the new is come. So the new creation that we are is spirit. Yes. So that's why that's why the Father is looking for worshipers who worship in spirit and truth. That's why Jesus comes to be baptized with spirit and fire. So we are to come alive in spirit. So our spirit is a constant, perfect oneness and communion with God. Whether we're living in a reality of understanding and knowing that, that's a different thing. But this is why Paul talks so much about life in the Spirit. Why Paul, so much, because he was carrying the revelation that we are spirit beings yep. and that we're called to live from the heavenly places. We're eternal beings Thank you. having a temporary yes. church, sure. not temporary beings having an eternal Right. Place. right. Yeah. So right. there can be, so this is happening now in my conversations and in even worship now. I could be singing and leading a song, and I'm having another yeah. conversation. Oh, yeah. oh, and I yeah. know this happens to you even yeah. in the All prayer the room. And, or, and you're just sitting, and you we can even be talking, and your spirit is having yeah. a conversation yeah. with Holy Spirit, and you're aware yeah. of it. See, that was exactly my point that I was trying to say. You cannot talk out loud. We see communication as one basic thing. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And on God's plane, it happens. And I know actually on people all that have had this happen to them for years in the congregation. They're sitting in their chair, and they're, the preacher is talking, and they are doing their best to listen, but another conversation is going on. Yeah. This happens actually to a lot of people. Yeah. And they think it's disrespectful. Right. They think it's not, you know, but it's actually right. the Lord. So he's, I've had this so many times, he's preaching a message to me while I'm hearing this guy, and or like you said, we're talking, and how much of this is happening that we're not even aware of, you know, our brain and the synapses and the spirit, how, do, how, do you, what, how does that work, how does it all, I mean, I think we're just learning how this, uh, how does that I would love to bring back what you said earlier. Um, when you said it starts with awareness, because there are so many people that actually don't realize don't that that's know. happening yeah. already. No. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so oftentimes they're super aware that they may be having a conversation and they're hearing lies from the enemy, yeah. but they're not correlating that, that that actually is a gift designed to be a constant communion with the Father. And uh, it's just like being hijacked by the enemy. It is, yeah. And yeah. So that's what it does. There's, there's a space where like, look, <clears throat> I have people ask me, well, how do I get there? How do I get to that space where I'm in constant communion? And it starts with what you said, being intentional, having an intentional awareness. Actually, I would say it starts with wanting it. Oh, absolutely. Because you will not pursue what you don't first desire, absolutely. and then second, believe. This is what I tell you. First, you gotta, first you gotta want it. Absolutely. Then you have to believe that He will do it, and then is when you really start seeking. Because right. if your seeking comes before those two things, oh, you're yeah. basically just asking God without any any belief in you. And right. whatsoever is not a faith is sin, you're missing them up. Right. Right. So you have to you have to want it, yep. you have to believe that you can have it, and then you have to start asking. And then you have to be patient. Yep. And you have to yep. let him work that out of you. The believing part of this is what you said. I am a spirit, I have a soul, mind, will, emotions, and I live in a body. 
I, ha I am a, a spirit. If I fall over dead right now, you guys are going to be going, Jim, Jim, Jim. And I'm, I'm gonna actually going to lay on top of you. The freaking Good. Good. <laughs> You're not, not going to go, get off of me. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> but we all say that and we hear stories about this. And, and I think we kind of believe it, but we kind of don't. We are a spirit. Yes. And we have been encased in a frame of flesh. And our mind will look. That's a first off, that's the thing that makes me look for you. And so it starts by believing that, oh, I really am an eternal, you know, and it's not goo goo weird, weird, you know, new age stuff. No, no, all that stuff is hijacked. You're not all that, you know what I'm saying? So when you believe this, then that's, that is not even a question of looking for it. You have to look for that. That's reality. That, you don't have to ask to be, for that to be true. It is true. So once you go into that, then you can start saying, okay, how do I live from the spirit while in the flesh? You know, and this changes when people pass away. This changes your I'm you, there are a lot of things, and I'll stop here. There are a lot of things where people this will change your life. This new bar of soap will change your life. This will change your life. This you are looking for a radical life change, you write this principle down and you start going after this and really believing it. I am a spirit, I have a soul, I live in a body. And you start knowing to God about that and what that looks like for life. And I promise you that will yes. for real yes, change will. your life. Yes, it will. So, final words, we gotta go. So good. I just want to tell everybody and, and just reiterate even in this atmosphere here why we're worshiping this. Yes. Yes, this is why we're worshiping. Why do we worship in the why tent? Do we do this? Yeah, for yeah. eight days. Why do we do daily worship? Is because this is actually the Father and, and giving us the desire. You know, Philippians two thirteen says that God is giving us the the power and the desire, the desire and the ability to to enter in. So okay, yes, quote King James for those who don't. Yeah, for it is God. Yeah, who has worked work in, in, in you both. Yeah. To Will, will and to, desire yeah. and to perform. Yes. So he's the guy that gives you the desire. Yeah. And then he gives you gives you what you desire. Everything you need. Yeah. So so yes, there is a <laughs> there is a place where we have to desire. But I want everybody to know this is the this is the amazing it's thing of the desire. grace of God. It's yes. it's his desire. Yes. I say it's like a potato peeler. <laughs> yeah. God just takes some of his desire yeah. and puts exactly. it in there. And we're like, oh I want God so bad. And yeah. he's going, yes. yeah, that's because yeah. I put yeah. that yes. in right. Exactly. Right. Yeah. So, so he's pursuing us. He actually is drawing us to this place. And I, I want to speak to the entire body of Christ right now. This is where we, we have stopped so many times at just the greatest news of Jesus paying the penalty for a cross, a cross and, 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 and taking upon all of our brokenness and all of our pain and all of our everything that's hurt, everything that's been gross in our life. But we were not, we're designed to live in the resurrection. Like we are, yep. Christ's yeah. resurrection is our resurrection. You can't Colossians. skip that, yeah. but you are supposed to go beyond. Yes, yes. Yeah. And, and so there's this, the Father is drawing all hearts across the globe to this place. David caught something that opened up a Old reality. Testament. Thank you. Right. Okay, <laughs> he, he caught something and the Lord said this, this thing, that I've shown David, this thing that we have, yeah. that's something that will go beyond eternity. Yeah. That's something that goes outside of time and space, and it's something that will be eternal. Yeah. Because it's the essence of intimacy. It's the essence of beholding each other. I'm gazing into his face. He's gazing into my face. His delight, and I'm delighting in his grin, and he's delighting in my grin. And, and we're, and we're I'm, sharing. I'm watching you while you're watching yeah, me. And we're I'm sharing. loving you while you're loving yeah, me. Yeah. And, and we begin to just, we begin to manifest his joy. We begin to manifest his delight. We begin to manifest his pleasure. Because we're living in this unceasing union, this oneness that, that we're there. So the only way that we get there, the only way is a lifestyle of worship. So you're saying that the gospel is not just Jesus saying, I came to forgive you of all your sins. Exactly. Jesus saying, I came to walk with you in closeness and nearness at whatever level you want to walk for the rest of your life. So the good news is not just forgiveness. Right. Yeah. The good news no. is intimacy. 
right. it's oneness. John right. 17. Oneness. Not right. only does right. Right. not only is Jesus right. willing oh, to walk with us. Oh, we're preaching to each other. Hey. <laughs> not only is is Jesus wanting, willing, and, and desiring, and and is walking with us, Emmanuel, God with us. He is. He's always praying the prayer that he prayed in John 17, that we would be one with them the same way they're one, and that we would be one with each other the same way. And one is the outcome of the other. Yes. When we get oneness with the Lord, Come on. we'll start having automatically with, with each other. Yeah, for this cause, shall a man leave his father and mother, and shall cleave into his wife, and the two shall become one, and two shall become one. Behold, yeah, think on. about this. Yes. I'm speaking uh, not a tiny mystery. Right. When, the, when the Apostle Paul caught something, a great mystery, yeah. you better know you don't have it down. Yeah. You probably don't have the full revelation. Yeah. I speak concerning Christ and His church. Not yeah. just the phrase, with the bride and the bridegroom. Yeah. Everybody knows that. Yeah. It is way deeper than that. Yes. Becoming one yes. with yes. the bridegroom yes. God he is the goal. So. And I'll, 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 I want to end with these two statements. The, the first one is, there is there is a significant... You're not going to live a lifestyle of worship for two hours on a Sunday morning. Nope. So there's something to the daily thing. Yep. That That is... I mean, when the Lord said, when I woke up quoting Romans 12, the Lord said, you're going to give yourself to me daily. Mm. Daily. You're, 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 you're going Romans to 12, worship... 1. Yeah, Romans 12, 1 and 2. 1 and 2. So you're you're gonna give yourself one of the things that he told me that I'm gonna do to present my body to him as a living sacrifice to worship him is I was going to show up and do corporate worship every day. And the second thing I'm gonna say is he said an hour, a minimum of an hour. So there was there's the the the, the daily aspect of it is one aspect. The other is give him the time. Yeah. The, it, it, it takes a bit of time for us to get past what's what going on up here yes, and to press in. And so I would say that if we're going to start actually living out this David's Tabernacle style of worship and intimacy with the Father, it needs to be daily and it needs to be for a minimum of an hour just just to open up. Now, I, I you almost can't. Get us to just be an hour now. I mean, right. it's, I mean, it's, at first it's kind of the yeah. grind. You know, you're working yeah. through it. You got all this stuff going now, on. Now, now so we're just hungry. Yeah. You become so I hungry totally for it that. that an hour is nothing. You're like, wait a minute. Okay, Sorry, so no, 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 no. I, and again, we can do this for a long, long time. Um, the the thing that I say is that if you want something daily, you should so it. Yeah. It's not on the side. And don't make it harder than you can do. You know, start with an hour. You know, just start with that. And, and leave, you know, because anything worth doing is worth doing for. Me. <laughs> wait. <laughs> yeah, wait a minute. I learned that from, uh, from one of the guys at that morning star ministry. The point is, you're probably not going to do it for a while. Yeah, I know. And that's okay. Nobody starts out being right. an master musician right. or, a, a, you know, a whatever you are, a, wood, a woodworker. You start where you are and just know that that is pleasing to the heart of God yes. and that He is yes. way more appreciative than you would know. So we got to go because yeah. we're just three preachers here <laughs> yeah, just we're preaching right. to each other. And thank you for, for listening to our <laughs> going on but anyway god bless you so uh, lord we just bless your people this yes. morning and we thank you for them and we just ask you to encourage our hearts in love and draw them a little closer today because of what we said Amen. in jesus name so we got evangelism guys come in the tent yeah. and so we gotta go <laughs> thank you guys for taking the time yeah. love, you too. love you too and uh yeah it's gonna be a good last day yes here at david's town Amen. So, six o'clock is the last um uh, it'll actually, four to six is the last set. You want to come do it because God always saves yeah. the best line for the last. So God bless you and give yourself permission. Have a great day. <laughs> <laughs>